Hi, Rachel. Mike Pence in Washington, D.C. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Good afternoon, Mr. Vice President. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm just great. Just great. Thank you. Good. Now, here in Iowa, farming issues are, of course, top of mind. President Trump said the China trade deal means less to him now than when he made it, which has made some farmers here in Iowa a bit uneasy. Do you think they should be? Well, American farmers and Iowa farmers have no greater champion than President Donald Trump, whether it be the steps this president uh, has taken to provide relief during this challenging time in the life of our nation, or whether it be during the, uh, the efforts uh, that we saw uh, by China in response to the strong steps the president took that were impacting farmers, that the president directed billions of dollars to support agriculture. We'll continue uh, to be there for agriculture across uh, Iowa. And we'll, we'll continue to support ethanol. Even in this challenging time, we're going to be moving forward to make sure that, that vital industry in this state uh, has the support that it needs and deserves. But uh, I must tell you, uh, Iowa farmers have no better friend than President Donald Trump. And now switching to the topic of coronavirus, both the president and Secretary DeVos have discussed withholding federal funding from schools if they don't reopen. Is that actually on the table? And also, do you feel it is safe for kids to go back during the spike in cases we're seeing right now? Well, we really believe at the, with the guidance of CDC that we can safely reopen our schools. Now, now Rachel, there may be individual cities in this country or individual counties that may want to adjust the pace of getting kids back. But as the CDC published last week, we think it's in the best interest of America's kids to get them back in school. It's in their best interest of not only their academic future, but also their overall well-being. You know, it's important to remember what, what we know about the coronavirus, and that is that, that the, the risk to healthy children of the coronavirus is very low. Uh, and, and we can take steps in our schools as the CDC has directed uh, and as Governor Reynolds is, is implementing that would protect any faculty that might be vulnerable and also take into consideration the need for social distancing and additional hygiene measures. But remember, when, when, kids, when kids miss out on in-person learning in the classroom, it's, it's, not, it's not just that they fall behind academically, which is very significant, but also, remember, uh, children that have learning disabilities don't get their counseling. Children with special needs don't get the support. And the nutrition programs that are administered at our schools for underprivileged kids uh, become much more difficult to, to, uh, to operate. And so for all of those reasons, the CDC and 65,000 pediatricians across the country have joined with President Trump and our administration to say it's, it's time to safely reopen our schools, to get our kids back in the classroom is best for our kids. Uh, we think it's best for working families that face un tremendous burdens if kids don't go back to school. And also we believe it's, it's best for reopening Iowa's economy and, and reopening America. So speaking of education, I hear the second lady is in Iowa today and the polls are tightening here. So what is the strategy to make sure that your team does win Iowa again? Well, we're very proud to have my wife Karen in Iowa today campaigning with Ashley Hinson, who will be a great member of the United States Congress. And by electing Ashley and by re-electing Senator Joni Ernst and, and by electing President Donald Trump for four more years, we're going to keep Iowa on the path of growth and prosperity that this president promised four years ago and delivered every day since. It really is remarkable to think that all the promises President Trump made to the people of Iowa four years ago, he kept. I mean, we rebuilt our military. We cut taxes across the board for working families, small businesses, and family farms. We unleashed American energy, energy innovation, supporting ethanol and other forms of, of American uh, energy. Now we're a net exporter of energy for the first time in more than 70 years. And we fought for the kind of free and fair trade that you see in the USMCA. That was a win for America's farmers and a win for America's businesses. But um, the choice in this election couldn't be clearer. The stakes couldn't be higher. We're gonna take that record, that record of economic growth. It's already created a foundation where our economy has recovered seven million jobs back uh, from the 22 million that were lost in this pandemic. 
Uh, and we're going to contrast that with Joe Biden's agenda, where he wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion, bury Iowa's economy under an avalanche of regulation, uh, and advance the kind of uh, liberal policies and appointments uh, to our courts that will continue to not only see his party, but would see our country move further and further to the left. Uh, we think it's a very clear choice, uh, and I truly do believe that uh, with four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House, with Senator Joni Ernst back in the Senate, and with Ashley Hinson in a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives, we'll make America great again, again. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Vice President. I truly appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Good to be with you.